Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in today. Uh, I see a few people on, so and it is 10 o'clock, so we'll get started. Um, today, you might notice a little chain of scenery. We are outside today. It's just such a nice day, and I couldn't couldn't pass up the fact to be outside. So, um, if you are new here, um, and this is your first time joining us on one of these lives, we are um, New Hampshire Audubon. My name is Shelby. I am the education coordinator here at the McLean Audubon Center. Um, and I uh, do lots of different things in my job, but one of my main things is to support our mission through education. So our mission here at New Hampshire Audubon is to um, support New Hampshire's environment for wildlife and for people. Um, and we do that through lots of different branches of the organization. Uh, mine being education, I'm doing things like this. Um, we have school programs, they can come to us, we go to them. Um, we have summer camp programs, all kinds of different things that we do. We have, um, if you've been tuning in, you've seen uh, most of our raptors here at the center. Um, we have six of them that live here. They are all uh, rehabilitated, non-releasable raptors, um, which means that they all have some injury to themselves, uh, basically making them so they couldn't survive out in the wild. Um, Today we're going to see one of our reptile friends. Um, a lot of our reptiles, they unfortunately were taken from the wild as pets um, and then somebody decided that they didn't really want them anymore. So um, that's how they ended up with us. Uh, the guy you're going to see today, he has a, a little bit of a special story, um, a little bit different than some of our other guys who were pets and then came to us. Um, this one is very similar to some of our raptors, how he has a, an injury and um, that's why he can't go back out into the wild or that's why he doesn't live in the wild. So um, let's just dive in. So today we are going to see our wood turtle and let me just grab him. All right, so this is, let's see if I can make sure you can see him very well. This is our wood turtle. Um, this guy, uh, like I said, he has a special story where um, he was found in the wild, um, already injured and fully healed, which is one of the really cool things about him is that he um, had this injury, but he fully healed himself and it was out in the wild and somebody took him from the wild and brought him to us. Um, it's unknown if he would have been able to survive on his own, like if somebody hadn't taken him from the wild um, and brought him to us, or if um, he wouldn't have survived. So it's probably best that he's here with us, but it's important to not take wild animals from the, um, from the wilderness, if you will. Um, try to keep them where they are, even if they do look like maybe they're um, injured in some way. Um, you know, maybe call somebody before you just decide to pick them up and take them. Um, and that person can help you decide whether or not it's probably best to bring them in or um, it's a good idea to leave them where they are. So um, this guy, I can tell you about his injury here. Hopefully you can still see him. We're kind of up high today. <laughs> um, so this guy, he has, if you can, if you can see, he is missing his two front feet. So this is what a normal turtle foot would look like on our back here and our little front feet here they're missing the uh, foot part of it I guess if you will and we think he was attacked by an otter um, otters do like to eat turtles unfortunately so um, they are one of the um, predators of these guys. So this guy I can assume was probably um, dug down in the mud hibernating sometime during the winter time because that's what they do. They hibernate in the winter. Um, and a turtle came along and maybe thought that he would make a good snack. Um, so he attacked him. But luckily this guy got away. He fully healed himself and he gets along just fine. Um, in a little bit we can go put him in the grass and you guys can see him move around. Um, he really likes to be outside and moving around as much as he can since he does spend a good amount of his time in his tank. Um, so yeah. Um, the way this works, if you want to ask questions, feel free to just pop those in the uh, comment box if you're new. Um, 
somebody says call who um, so let's say you came across a um, you know injured animal in the wild I would start with fish and game um, and there's there's lots of resources on both their website and if you just call them they could tell you um, where to take the animal or we have some really awesome uh, rehabbers in our state who can help you out if um, that is the case um, so I said this guy's a wood turtle. Um, he is a uh, semi-aquatic or semi-terrestrial turtle, which means that he um, is a turtle that lives kind of in both the water and on land. Um, this guy spends a lot of time, if he was out in the wild, he would probably live near a stream or a nice pond uh, where he could kind of use the area around the pond. So. Um, the wooded area to find food and things, but also lots of time in the water swimming around um, and exploring and hibernating in the water, like I said. Um, so he is a semi-aquatic or semi-terrestrial turtle. So in his tank, he has um, a nice big water pan that he spends most of his time in. Um, if he's not in his water, he's just kind of out basking in the under his heat lamps and things. So um, he does spend a lot of time in his water, but also a lot of time on land. So um, these guys are omnivores, which means that they eat both plants and uh, meat. Uh, this guy in the wild would typically eat things like uh, mushrooms and wild berries and um, uh, different worms and bugs and things that he's going to find out in the wild. Um, in captivity, he eats things like um, uh, like really green leafy lettuce, um, some fruits, um, lots of veggies and things. So things like, um, let's see, uh, what does he have this week? So he has some banana, so which is typically not something that they would eat in the wild. Um, but our turtles love bananas and they don't get it a lot just because um, a lot of the fruits have a lot of sugar in them. So a lot of sugar isn't really great for these guys. We want them to have more like vegetables and uh, leafy greens um, and then a little bit of a uh, little bit of fruit to kind of as their dessert. Um, so this week they have some banana, they have some tomatoes, um, some spinach, some just like some leafy greens, um, a couple blueberries. Um, which blueberries might be something that this guy would probably find out in the wild because as we know blueberries like to grow around like pond and um, wetland areas so if this is an area that this guy is going to inhabit then um, probably an area that blueberries are going to grow as well so it might be something that he would find and get to eat naturally in the wild which is really awesome so um, there's a lot going on over here there's birds he's checking out all the birds over here um, so that is what they eat. Um, let's see, what else can I tell you? These guys, um, I can show you where they typically live in New Hampshire. So I have a little map here, um, that shows you. So the, um, black is when, or is where they kind of currently are. And then the darker color, as you can see here is historically where they are, uh, or the lighter color, sorry. Um, is where they historically were and then the white is pretty much where they haven't been found or um, They're not really inhabiting so you can see in New Hampshire. We have them pretty widespread um, but they are a uh, vulnerable to uh, Extinction species which means that there aren't you know, there aren't very many of them, but they aren't you know they are extinct yet, but they're vulnerable to it. So um, yeah, that's where they live. And then as opposed to like where they live in New Hampshire or in the U S they live mostly in the Northern, uh, like the Northeast. So where we live, Maine, Vermont, places like that. And then they could go all the way up to Nova Scotia, which I think is pretty interesting. Um, so they kind of have a wide range in the U S in the Northeastern area. Um, let's see. Do all turtles carry salmonella so um it is true that some turtles can carry salmonella and the reasoning for that being um because they do spend a lot of time like in the water and things um they can you know kind of grow that bacteria and stuff um as long as you're if you have a turtle at home 
um, as long as you're cleaning their enclosure and everything it's you know it's unlikely that you're going to catch it and as long as you aren't like touching your turtle and then touching your mouth and uh, just making sure to wash your hands after you uh, touch your turtle and then even same goes for a wild turtle if you find a turtle out in the wild obviously we know that uh, their you know habitat and things are getting cleaned they live in the wild so it's more likely that a turtle in the wild is going to have that salmonella uh, bacteria on them but as long as you you know just wash your hands after you touch them um, you should be okay let's see um what else was I just gonna tell you oh so I was gonna show you his so I kind of showed you his feet so we could see that he just has little stumps here um, but underneath something that I think is really cool is he has these kind of chunks missing from his uh, shell which is from the otter you got to see the tooth marks here um, I just think it's really cool how you can see how um, you know, sturdy and rugged these guys are and how, you know, they can kind of snap back from things really well. So I don't know how long this guy was out in the wild for uh, before he was found and brought to us, but, um, you know, I can only imagine that he, um, you know, he was able to heal himself and kind of move on from uh, his injuries. So, um, a lot of people are always worried about like whether he gets around really well and um some people have even suggested like if you've seen the videos of like people hooking little like lego wheels up to their turtle so they can walk around so people suggest that which cracks me up um but he can get along just fine even without his front two feet um he does move around on his stumps really well I would say one disadvantage that this guy has is when turtles eat, they use their front feet to kind of help themselves like break food off and things. So they kind of using their feet to do things like that. One disadvantage that this guy has is that he doesn't really have those feet to help him do that. Um, so when he is eating, he gets really messy. He gets all over his face. Um, it's funny to see, and he can kind of use his stumps a little bit, but um, he did, he's a pretty messy eater for that. Uh, let's see. What was I just going to say on that? Oh, I forgot to tell you how old he is. So this guy came to New Hampshire Audubon in 1996, uh, which means that he's at least 24 years old. So, um, these guys can live for quite a while. Um, in the wild, they can live upwards of like 40 years. And then in captivity, they can live for like 60 years. So these guys can live for a really long time. So one of the most important things when you think about getting a turtle is just remembering how long they live and how much work it is to take care of them. Um, this guy, he eats Monday, Wednesday, Friday, so every other day. Um, he gets a plethora of food, as I was telling you guys. Um, he needs his water changed pretty frequently. He needs the bedding and his thing changed frequently. So um, it's important to look into all the things that going into having a turtle. Um, requires before you get a pet turtle because they do live a really long time and they do take quite a amount of work to take care of so um this guy is 24 he's still pretty young which is funny um he is one of our i would say grumpier turtles um he i mean i think rightfully so he has the right to be a little bit grumpy um on account of missing his two front feet um but he's being really awesome right now and i'm really glad that you guys are getting to enjoy this um so let's take him over into the grass and see if he wants to go over there and explore. Ooh, all right, so while we're walking over there, somebody says, what are you feeding him for food and does he get any special treats? So um, these guys in captivity, he is eating uh, things like um, lots of leafy greens. So in the wild, he would eat things like aquatic plants that are growing um, in the uh, pond. Um, he would eat some, you know, leafy greens or leafy plant material that is growing kind of around the pond or any plants that he could find kind of, um, you know, near where he lives. Um, in captivity, he's getting things like spinach and spring mix. Um, he's getting some tomatoes, lots of vegetables, uh, more vegetables than um, fruits just because fruits have a lot of sugar in them and just like us you know we shouldn't they shouldn't have a lot of sugar um, 
but they are getting, you know, a little bits of fruit here and there and as kind of a special treat. So some of, one of their like most special things that they get um, for fruits and veggies is their, one of their favorite things is banana. So um, they do get, get some banana here and there and that's kind of their special treat. Um, one of the, uh, so in the wild, he would eat beating things like uh, bugs on the surface of um, the water, beetles and things, uh, flying bugs, anything that he could catch. Um, here in captivity, he's getting things like uh, mealworms and um, the little beetles that evolve from mealworms and um, what else do they eat? Um, sometimes they get the red wiggler worms. So we have like a little composting bucket where um, the red wigglers live and they we feed them to these guys. Um, I think that's pretty much it for they get for their meat sources. So let me show you this guy. He is, uh, he's on a mission here. He was in the grass and now he's moved onto the walkway. So of course he's not gonna move as soon as I show you guys. We'll just kind of let him do his thing as we answer some questions. Uh, Becky says, how many types of turtles are there? From Abby, hi Abby. Um, we have here at our center, we have uh, three painted turtles, a red-eared slider, um, a box turtle, a wood turtle, and I believe that's it. So we have six different types um, of turtles, or six turtles in total, and then a few different types. Um, can he swim without his front feet? Yeah, he does a really good job of being able to swim. Um, even without those feet, he... Um, his little water pan is relatively not small but he has like some rocks that he can get up on to kind of get out of his um rocks or out of the water dish there so um he doesn't have a lot of room to like fully swim around but i could imagine that he would if he had the opportunity so you can you guys can see he gets along really well even without those front feet We'll get down on his level. Uh, William says, is there box turtles in the northern country of New Hampshire? That is a good question. Um, we can. Let's see if we can find out for you. Uh, I'm just going to pick this guy up so he doesn't wander away. Or so something doesn't pick him up. Um, box turtles in the northern country. I don't think so. Um, but that does not mean that it's, um, that I'm hundred percent right. Um, let's go in and see, cause we do have a box turtle that lives here at our center and, um, we have a map that can tell us. And our box turtle may be our feature next week. So I don't want to ruin the surprise by showing you him. But um, it looks like no, um, box turtles are endangered in New Hampshire, which means, you know, there really aren't that many of them. There's only a few places in the state that there are them. So um, to answer your question, I would say no. Um, Emily wants to know how long they can live for. So um, wood turtles in the wild, so out kind of on their own, they can live for 40 years, um, you know, saying that there's no predators or anything that uh, stops them from continuing on. Um, and then in captivity, so places like here in our nature center, um, they can live upwards of like 60 years. So they can live for a really long time. So it's important uh, just to remember that when you go to get a pet turtle, how long they can live for. Ooh, Catherine says there used to be box turtles in New Hampshire, but there are no known populations in extant. So awesome. Thank you for helping us out with that. Um, what else do you guys want to know about him? Let's see. I'll bring him back out. Let him get featured here one more time. Check him out. Um, what else about this guy? So this guy... Um, ooh, one of the cool things to look at is their beaks. So, um, they have kind of a beak, like a bird sort of, I guess, if you will, they don't have any sort of teeth. Um, 
so all the force and the ripping and everything comes from just the sharp edge of their beak. So when they eat and things, they kind of bite into it and it kind of breaks it in half. Like when we eat, we use a fork and a knife. Uh, these guys just use their sharp beak. Um, so that's one cool thing um, to think about that they don't have teeth. They just have a sharp beak. Uh, Abby wants to know if turtles ever leave their shell. Ooh, that is a really good question. So um, turtles don't ever leave their shell. So a lot of people think that turtles are kind of like hermit crabs where they can grow out of their shell and they need to get a new shell. Um, a turtle's shell is always growing with them. So um, when a turtle is born, they're born with their shell um, and their shell is actually their spine. So the bone that, or the bones that run up our back that allow me to stand here and allow you guys to ask me questions are the bones that um, are connected or in this guy's spine. So along the back of his uh, shell here is where you would find his uh, spine. So it's, <laughs> can you guys see him with his mouth open? Um, so their spine is just, basically their shell is their spine. Um, so without their shell, they couldn't survive. Um, they can't come out of it. They're connected to their shell. Um, so they can't come out of their shell. And one of the cool things about turtles is I said that their shell is always growing with them. Um, so on the back of their shell here, they have these little segments kind of, and they're called their scoots. And... Um, those kind of grow with them and like come off in little pieces or sometimes they come off in full pieces um, where they're shedding them because they're growing kind of like when a um, when a snake sheds its skin um, it's kind of slides out of it very similar to that just that they kind of flake off so their shell is always growing with them um, who is their worst predator? So, uh, here in New Hampshire, they're probably their worst predator are things like otters, um, and aquatic mammals that are going to kind of inhabit the same area as these guys. Um, so their, um, worst predator I would say would be aquatic, uh, mammals like otters. Um, what else? I think raccoons even eat turtles, um, but a raccoon really isn't going to venture into the water. But maybe if the two of them uh, encountered each other on land, that they might. Um, so yeah. Uh, Melanie wants to know if he was born without feet. So uh, this guy, uh, the reason he was here at New Hampshire Audubon is because he uh, was attacked by an otter. Speaking of otters, um, they... Um, he was found in the wild, fully healed, and we believe it was an otter um, who kind of attacked him and bit his feet off. Um, and you can see underneath here, you could see fully really well his stump there. And then you could see the chunks of his shell that are missing from him um, that the otter must have taken. Um, Abby wants to know when they are born, is their shell soft or already hard? Um, I believe in some turtles it is soft and then it, as they start to grow a little bit bigger, it gets harder. Um, I believe that's only for some turtles though. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, but I think it starts off pretty soft and then hardens as they go. Um, let's see, what else can I tell you about this guy? Let's see if he wants to walk back around in the grass. I could give you a little tour of the outside of our center as well. So uh, this is our McLean Center. And this right now is our pollinator garden. Um, right now it is not super full of life, um, but hopefully in the coming weeks it will be. Um, there's all kinds of plants in there that are really good for our uh, pollinators and birds and everyone. Um, and then... Back here, this is where our screech owl lives, which you guys saw last week. And then this is back here. This is where all of our birds live. That's their enclosure back there. Um, and then, yeah, this is just our kind of our courtyard, the rest of our building. And our trails go kind of out this way. And then there's a couple other places to access them. So it looks like this guy doesn't want to hang out in the grass. He's coming for me. Um, but yeah, if you guys have other questions, feel free to just pop them in the comment box. Otherwise, this guy's just having a grand old time.
exploring outside, which thankfully that it is nice out right now, he can actually go out and do that. So we like to take our turtles out um, outside and let them explore, at least for a little while. Um, you know, not every day, but every now and then. <laughs> Looks like he's maybe going to eat this plant, and I don't know if the plant is safe for turtles, so we won't let him eat the plant. <laughs> maybe he just wants to explore in the garden. All right. <laughs> I'm going to flip it back around here. Um, so, I guess if you guys don't have any other questions, um, I am going to pop him back in there. And I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. It is um, a beautiful day out, hence why we're going live outside. Um, so, get outside. Try to enjoy it as much as you can. Um, I believe I will be back next Thursday. Um, possibly with either a raptor or a reptile. So stay tuned. Um, I hope you guys that are enjoying these, um, keep tuning back in and supporting us as best as you can. Um, a couple last questions. Somebody says, does he bite or are they ever aggressive? Um, yes. I will say that our wood turtle, he is a little bit grumpy. Um, he does try to bite. Um, it's not, I wouldn't say it's intentional. I don't think he wants to bite me because he's like mad at me or anything. Um, one of the things we try to uh, tell the children at summer camp and stuff when we have him out is that our little fingers look like worms to them. So the reason he might, you know, bite me or something like that is just that he thinks maybe my fingers are worms or um, other little fingers and things look like worms. So maybe he's just hungry. Um, so I don't think that they're aggressive in the fact that like they want to just attack you to attack you. Um, I just think that sometimes we get, um, you know, confused about that. Um, how large can they get? So, um, like I said, they're always growing. Um, but it's not like a noticeable amount of growth. So it's not something that you can, uh, just see by looking at him. Like every day I don't notice a change in him. Um, I believe that wood turtles, this is probably, you know, um, around the largest he'll get. Obviously he'll grow a little bit more, a little bit, um, over time, but nothing significant where, um, you know, we won't, we, he's not going to get like giant, like our snapping turtles. They relatively stay pretty small. And he's a larger turtle. He's about the size of, if you tuned in and saw, um, our red-eared slider, he's about the same size. She maybe is a little bit bigger. Um, so yeah. Uh, what did you study to be able to work with animals? So, uh, I went to, uh, the University of New Hampshire for wildlife biology and conservation. Um, so yeah, I have a de that degree. Um, I started working here at New Hampshire Audubon with our summer camp program, um, which when summer camp was over, um, that developed into working with our animals here. Um, and having the degree definitely helped, but it's totally not necessary. Um, so yeah, I have lots of knowledge from my degree. And then I never, definitely never thought I would be working with birds or turtles. Um, but here I am, and I think turtles are the, or I think turtles and I think raptors are probably the coolest animal ever. So uh, definitely not where I thought I would be, but here I am, and I love it. Uh, ooh, what happens when they overheat? That is a good question. Um, I don't, they don't sweat. They're not like a human because they don't have glands like that. Um... I would say if it was an aquatic turtle, they would probably just get in the water. Um, but as for, I don't think they like pant or anything. Um, I'm going to have to look it up. That's a really good question. Um, I'll look it up and then I'll stick it in the comment box um, after we're done here um, when I have a chance to look it up. Thank you for asking. Um, okay, so um, I'm going to end it here. I hope you guys have... Uh, a wonderful time learning about our wood turtle, and I hope you will tune in next week. Um, we have activities Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Um, they could be changing up um, as, you know, we are trying to just get 
everyone involved and getting everything out there that we can. So um, if you have something that maybe you want to see from us that you haven't seen so far, or you want to hear from somebody that works here at New Hampshire Audubon, uh, feel free to put that in the comment box after I finish, or you can email me at smorelli, M-O-R-E-L-L-I, at nhaudubon.org. Um, so if you have something you want to see, uh, definitely email us um, and I will see if I can make it work. Uh, but otherwise, have an awesome day. Get outside um, and explore your neighborhoods or wherever you can.